welcome back to the Dog Star Fishing Channel. So, sorry we had to take a bit of a break, had to concentrate on health for a while. But, uh, luckily, I'm feeling a little bit better now, and I'm back out doing what I love. So, a very interesting location today. I'll switch around. You can see we've just got the tide flooding in now, meeting the wall that we're standing on. All coming in below our feet there. We have a massive sandy bay all to our right and we have a lovely old reef to our left there. So we're going to try to do a few things. I'm going to set up a couple of bait rods as per normal and try out a few different styles and techniques with them. I might even try and float fish for a bit. Uh, we're going to be dropping, Simon's got a prawn slash crab trap to be putting down. We might stick that down on the reef or everywhere or wherever he feels like sticking it down. Um, then also, because we're fishing off, off a high wall here, I have bought a drop net. Let's have a look where I put it. Here we go. Yeah, one big old drop net with lots of rope, but in between when we're using it to actually land fish, I might also try and fish for crabs with it. Stick a bit of bait in it, have it hanging down, touching the bottom. And hopefully the crabs volunteer themselves and jump into it. Um, there's a possibility of catching brown crabs or lobsters down here. But really I'd be happy with some small crabs that we can use for bait. Uh, I've also got my lure rod. So once that tide's in and darkness has hit, which it will do soon by the way. So what have we got? We've got we're about an hour and a half, maybe two hours after low tide. We've got the sun going down now. It's about half six in the evening maybe seven and yeah we won't have high tide till nearly midnight maybe 11 p.m so we've got it all to fish for uh but yeah we've got the lure rod so i might stick some lures up over the top of the rocks see if we can't tempt any bass in that way or anything else maybe pollock maybe mackerel and yeah just try and enjoy ourselves really now, I have I have heard of something quite fun earlier. So, we're down the Warren and just before the end of that headland there on the end of my finger, earlier today, apparently a basking shark was spotted. So I've got some really super strong pulley pen on. <laughs> I'm joking. I don't think anything I've got could pull in a basking shark. But, um, yeah, we'll definitely keep our eyes peeled for any big dorsal fins in the water swimming around. So here we go, we've got the bait for this evening. We got some yellowtail slash black lug there, rolled, they look a bit flattened and a bit wet. I don't know, that's how they've come out of the tackle shop there. And we've also got some ragworms there. They're relatively small ones, a few big ones in there. But yeah, then Simon there, he's got himself a normal mackerel. And in my bucket over there, I've got a couple of horse mackerel to use as bait. Um, we'll have the prawn trap down and the crab traps down throughout the night, so hopefully we'll be able to uh, replenish our bait stocks as we go. Right guys, so the first rod I've set up is my continental rod. Which, as you can see, is a Vercelli Enigma Furia. If you haven't watched the channel before, and on the danger end of that, I have got a free hook loop rig. Um, top hook, we've got a yellow lug. Middle hook, we've got a ragworm. Bottom hook, we've got another bit of lug. So I've ripped the lug in two. And split that between two hooks. The rag's not very big, so I've just left him whole on one hook. Um, you can see we've now got a couple of feet of water down below us. Uh, let's get right to the edge. So yeah, it's about time to start fishing. Now with this Conti rod, we know we've got the reef here and a big sandbar all in front of us. I'm just gonna try blasting it out onto the sand and see what happens. Um, with the other rod, I might try and sneak it in closer next to some rocks here. See if we can't snag anything different by uh, fishing closer into the reef. Anyway, if I'm really lucky, my friend Simon will hold the phone while we work it out there. No, oh no. <laughs>
other rod. I've got a bit of my horse mackerel out there and you can see I've filleted a flank and then off of that flank I've cut myself a nice strip there. So the other rod I'm going to be using tonight is actually a brand new rod to me. Somehow my mum managed to pick this up for free for uh, someone on the internet. So funnily enough I used to own pretty much this exact rod and he's sitting over there in Simon's rod stand right now. So this is a Daiwa Supercast um 13 foot beach caster designed and engineered in the uk that bit of writing says uh if we could get my camera to focus in on it i think that's as good as we're gonna get guys let's try wiping the lens eh? and you can see we've got a big old made in great britain sticker there and yeah this rod used to be mine I picked it up second hand off of someone, used it for a few years and then uh, last Christmas I wanted to get my good buddy over there a decent fishing gift but uh, I think I was a bit low on the old dollar so I ended up giving him one of my rods there and it's an absolute beautiful rod, I think I had to put a, get a new wire put on the end but other than that she's all original um, but yeah, they're a strange rod. They've got like, what, one, two, three, four, five eyes all stuck up the end. They're absolutely massive eyes on both of them. On the danger end, I've got a running ledger, but panel styly with size four hooks. So I'm going to try dropping that a bit closer in to the reef over here, guys. Try to stick it next to a big old rock. And hopefully conga, maybe bass. So we've only got 20 pound line on that rig. If I get bitten off at any point tonight, I've got a few of my super strong pulley panels ready to go. If I think there's any conga action to be had, I might get on one of them and drop it down the wall here onto the rocks. Um, if we walk along here, now you can see Simon has set his trap up already. So I would have showed you guys, but he was really rude and he didn't wait till we had the camera on shoot a crab trap yeah yeah you sit in your hammock and put your hands up yeah anyway guys we'll show you the crab trap later it's essentially if you've been watching the channel before it's exactly the same trap that i've been using on my boat which i funnily enough lost in this reef somewhere the other day while kayaking so uh yeah we'll see how his trap gets on then as i said i'm, I'm just going to use the old drop net there going to stick a bit of bait in it Drop it down every now and again, haul it up, and we'll see if we get any grabs in it. his crab trap for the first time nah, it doesn't look like anybody's home what is that oh no you've got a prawn in there there we go we've got a prawn Oh, it is a ray. It is a ray. Alright, unfortunately you're going to have to drop that camera to get on the drop net. Mmm, where else is it? There it is. Beautiful, look at that. Nice thorny. Yeah, nice thorny by the look of it. Yeah, it looks even better on the camera to be honest. <laughs> it 
stand, but if you got one in your pocket, I'll have it. Oh, no, it's on my stand. I think she's lip hooked anyway, so we'll be all right. Mind out the second bandit. back over so it's comfortable and we'll get this rig out of dog range bandit come away from that edge mate it's a little male form back race so you can see he's got the giblets down there we won't poke them Oh, he's chomping his jaws. He's angry. Uh, grinding away. Uh, get my headlight off. There we go, first fish of the night. Small male form back row. No, he's not that small. Must be a couple of pound. And he's chomping his jaws away at me. Yeah, uh, that's old you on both sides, so you're more comfy, more supported. Um, I'll stick him on my box, get a quick measure on him, but I think I'm going to get this one released as soon as I can. Alright, so we measure rays from wing to wing. And cool, he is one angry fish. And he would be legal to take, so rays only have to be 40 centimetres from wing to wing, as it says in the corner there. Um, but yeah, not my favourite meat, so I'm going to get this one released. Now I would like to release him in the drop net, but because this is a form back ray, we won't be able to, he'll just get caught in the net. So I'll grab a couple of pictures with him, then we'll get him back in the water. Something that doesn't look. So we've got Slaman coming in with a crab trap again. I can see a crab already. I see a crab already. Let's have a good look, because you had a small shrimp in there before as well. Well, it's pretty good eating. You can have a bit more of my squid for bait if you want, mate. Very much. Oh, you've got a common shore crab. And he's fighting back. Yeah, he's got a crabitude. Getting through the old... Has he got a door? No, I don't think your one has. Mm. It doesn't make it easy to get the crabs out. Ah, what's pulling at it? Well, he's caught a crab. If I'd have paid an extra £2.50, I'd have had a door. That's it, mate. To be fair, give it about a, couple, like a week or so. Rupert wants to make a crab trap. A crab trap like this wire mesh we found in the garden. Well, that'll be interesting, mate. We'll definitely keep the channel updated about that. Yeah. Got decent claws on him. Back he goes to rob our bait. <laughs> Still on you know. <laughs> so we got some shrimp in the bucket that Simon got over here. Real decent sized ones as well. Look at that guy over there. There we go, he's going down with the trap again. Simon's just had a bit of a slack line then. look too too heavy but maybe something you reckon there's someone here mate? yeah feels Bass. That's a bass. That's a nice bass. Yep, right, I'm gonna have to put the camera down and get this fish in. And here we go, guys. 
and pretty swiftly got him in the drop net. Simon has got himself a nice legal bass. Uh, I'd say that's good 42. And also, I was successful catching a few crabs in me uh, thing there. So we got one, two, three, four, five. That's a perfect little bait sized crab. I'll keep them in the net for the moment and we'll go have a look how big that bass is. Oh, was he just a tad under? Oh no! You sure? Let me see the nose. I know how much it upsets you when a fish has got to go home. No, he's just that shy bit under, isn't he? A little bit under, yeah. Oh, that's not a bad first fish, Simon, for the nice. night. Well done, mate. Thank you very much. Great job. Alright, guys, we're going for the release. 41 centimetres. He's lucky by a centimetre, this fish. Bit of a long drop, I know. But he's off like a bullet, we can't even see him. Gone. Gone, right. That's it, right. I reckon I might have a bass on as well because we've been seeing my country rod ping around for a few minutes. So we'll get my crabs out and then we'll get reeling in. Right, just sifting through my drop net here. Oh, I've caught a couple of monster prawns in it too. Look at the size of that one. Whoa. And he's got some power to him, that prawn. Uh, there he goes. You want to see him, Bandit? It's a shrimp. And we've got a couple of nice small crabs as well. But yeah, we've got about... Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five shrimp in there. Happy days. Alright, let's try to get these guys into a bucket. Even a little blenny in there. Yeah, leaving the drop net down did really well. See these little crabs here? Always even soft. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah, he's a tinny, that one. And all I did, I just chucked a whole mackerel in there that was like a bit too past it to use for a bait. And there's more shrimp there. And yeah, just left it down the wall. And to be honest, I had Simon's bass in there with him. Didn't even bother to empty it before we got Simon's bass up the wall. So that has done really well in a short space of time. And just goes to show you might as well leave it down if you're at a venue like this. Look at this tiny little crab there. One less thing to worry about, was it, when the bass was out? Tiny little baby crab. We'll lob him back in straight away. Couple of fish. Bandits. So that is definitely a pouting. But that schnock monster up there, that is not a conga. Not sure which yellow it is. Is it a silver eel? Even though they look there. green? No, I don't He's going to tie himself up in a hole. <laughs> look at that. Alright guys, unfortunately I lost a hook in that eel, so I've had to switch up my rigs. So this rig is just a two flapper, size two hooks on it. Now I've got half a lug on that top bait there, uh, on that top hook. And down here, I've taken one of our rather large scavenged prawns, and I've just hooked him through the tail there. Uh, I'm not going to be able to cast very hard, otherwise I'll just rip the prawn off. But I'm going to lob that out there and see if he can catch anything for me. Alright guys, so I've just pulled my drop net up again. First thing we can see, we've got a rather large crab who unfortunately hasn't got any claws left on him. Put that there, look at the size of that prawn again. Absolute meaty prawn. I'll get him in a bucket. Oi, come here. You got him. Oh, Simon's got that one. There's more in there, though. Here we go. A few more over there. Oh, wow. Oh, look at the size of this one. They charge you for a king prawn on him, mate, down the restaurant. Look at that. Absolute chunkers. Nice. Another nice size one there. These are edible as well. We could be eating these. But instead, we're going to use them as bait. 
a nice crab in there. He could be a peeler. Nah, he's looking a bit green on the bottom there. Now let's see, have we got anything else trapped up in here? No, I think that was our lot this Oh wait, no. Another big prawn there. I'll grab him. Is it? Where's your antenna? Come here. There's your antenna. Oh, tried to take my hand off. Little tiny, little tiny one Simon just had in there. Well, it's doing really well. The bait barely eating. Look, we've got an eyeball missing. That's what they're going for. <laughs> but yeah, it's catching us bait as we go. You want to pull mine up and see how it's looking? Come on then, let's go check Simon's one. I'll bring over the buckets. Turn you off for a second, save the camera. Right, so the uh, the the drop net is actually out fishing the prawn trap for both crabs and prawns. Which is anyway, yeah, we've dropped the crab in with the prawns for the moment, but uh, yeah, it's causing some ruckus in the bucket. But yeah, look at these prawns; they're absolutely insane. They're bigger than some of the whiting you catch down hive. Let's get you in the crab bucket, eh? There we go. Now you can stop terrorising the prawns. What do you reckon, Bandit? We're doing pretty good tonight, mate. Well, yeah. We're keeping on the bait supply as we fish. Which is nice. Let's have a look down at the rods. Anyone doing anything drastic down there? Oh, maybe, yeah, there's a good nod on my Conti. Let's go get that. Oh, guys, unfortunately, that bite that I saw is just another eel who is doing wonders on the brand new rig that I just put on. So I won't film for very long. I'm gonna try and get him off before he does uh, the rig any more damage. Alrighty guys, Simon. Oh, battery too low to use flash call. We've gone through the battery on this camera already. All right, we've got a two up, one down rig made by Simon earlier. He was very kindly lent it to me. On the bottom hook, we have a small ragworm. On the middle hook, we have a rather large shrimp. And on the top hook, we have a lugworm. So we've got a nice variety of bait going on there. Uh, pretty small hooks in this rig, so I'm a little bit scared I'm going to catch an eel again. But we'll send it out there and we'll see what happens. Absolutely lovely evening, so it's nice and warm. You see the cliff behind us here. Always, if you are on this spot, if you know where it is, do worry, but still this cliff do fall down from time to time and land on the pathway as you can see a nice big boulder over there anyway let's get this bait out there I think I'm going to have a switch up in positions and rigs on the uh, the other rod over here because he's not really catching anything oh, Simon's just had an almighty bite you'd see it on the rod tip mate This should be a decent sized fish, hopefully. Sorry, guys, I know it's dark. Um, it's a red mullet. Red mullet. Here we go, another species up here. What made that almighty run though? That can't have been that little fish. Bandit! Bandit, leave it alone. Cool, just about saved his laughter. That was incredible, that noise. Yeah, look at that guys, red mullet. Oh, you never seen one of these. No. Nope. So Beautiful looking fish, aren't they? Go for a swim, mate. Was that really what made all of that noise? Well, I don't know, they're supposed to hit quite hard, aren't they? Oh, yeah, come on, mate. Go on, go on, yes, come on. So, I just try and get a very clear video of this gorgeous fish. Beautiful colours on him. Alright guys, I only went and got myself a red mullet as well. So this is really adding up for the species tonight. Wonderful session. 
Look at this fish, he's like a koi carp. Absolutely stunning little thing. I'm gonna definitely get my picture taken with him. Look at that gorgeous fish. Wow, some might call it ugly, some might call it gorgeous. I think he's very interesting. Nice little catch there, mate. You're all not having him, Bandit. Um, I repaired the two up, one down that I'd had a hook ripped off. And I've baited it up with a rag, a lug, and another shrimp, because I'm pretty sure I actually caught my red mullet on a shrimp there. Uh, and on this left hand rod to try to get it in the game a bit more the running ledger with the big bit of horse mackerel on wasn't really doing the business so I've just tried to switch up I've put a 202 flapper on there I've got a relatively small crab and just hooked him through the back and then I've also got a lug worm on there but yeah it's been a smashing night already so I just pulled me uh, dropping it up again guys Plenty of no prawns in there. Look at them. Nice, big and juicy. And keep dropping them in the bucket. And you come in. There we go, another big old prawn. Or shrimp, whatever you want to call it. A smaller one there. That's my lot on that hole. Not bad for a drop net, eh? My mackerel's still going pretty strong. He's lost an eye. He's got a bit of damage down there. But yeah. I'm gonna lob that straight back off the edge of the wall. So, I did have a rather nice bite on the Conti, but I stupidly left it for a little while thinking I'd get more fish on the rig. And I think I lost my fish. Which is unfortunate, but left hand rod, I can't get that to get a bite all night. It did have one good bite, but I think I had the drag done up really tight. Maybe if I had it a bit looser, I'd have caught the fish, but... Yeah, I don't seem to be getting that in the right place, or doing the right thing. Uh, we've peaked in the tide now, so the tide is actually on the way back out for about an hour. Hopefully that doesn't mean the fishing is going to slack off because it's been pretty good so far, really. But yeah, just have to wait and see. Probably got another, uh, another hour in us tops, really, isn't it, mate? About another hour tops, so see what we can catch in that time. Yeah. Alright guys, had a nice big bite on the Conti rod there and that has resulted in this rather large pout in here that's got to be a good, good pound and a half, might even try to weigh this one Nice little fight in, you can feel it jiggling Oh, Bandit, you get your face out of it Bandit! Bandit! You're very naughty Right, I'll put him back in there, but if we have a look in the old drop net as well, gang. We've got... Some more gigantic prawns in there. And a couple of little crabs. So it's absolutely Bandit. smashing it. Bandit, you have to stop. Away. Look at this boy, look, he's smothered in fish slime, everything. You're naughty, mate, you've got to get back a bit. Right, guys, we'll get this fish off the hook. And probably get it released. It's a weird fight if you feel like kind of like knocks. Mm. I'm not entirely sure what we've got. Oh, still quite deep. Another nice ray. Is that a... No, it's a thorn though. Is it? I don't know. Yeah, here yeah, it is. Damn. <laughs> Alright, we have a ray on. Just gotta try to get him in the net. 
Bend it, get your ass back from the edge. Suicidal dog. Nah, just pull it up, mate. Bend it away from that edge. Another nice fawning up. I'll get the line put away. I've got the ray off the hook. And this one's measuring 42 from wing to wing. And this one's a female. Because there's no giblets hanging down. Pop a decent fight. Didn't take long to catch. I think it's caught on the lug worm there. You having a good look at the fish, Bandit? Yeah. All right, we'll get this one released. All right, guys, Simon's last reeling of the night. And we're pretty sure he's got a uh, form back ray on there. Let's try and get down here a little bit. Yep, he's got a form back ray down there. I'll get it up in a drop net, we'll have a look at it. Here we go. <coughs> Simon has got himself a female form back ray there. Let's try to get out the right way up. You're all caught up in the net. Yep, nice little female. Female form back ray. And there was some more shrimp in the net as well. If I could see where they've gone. It might be under the ray. Alright, that was Simon's last reeling for the night. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty good reeling for him. Mm -hmm. Now they've all been coming up around the 40 mark really. 40 centimetres from wing to wing. Mm -hmm. Nothing smaller, nothing bigger. See the hook. Yeah, we go. The hook's up. Such that pulled. Yeah, we go. Look, massive prawn. Nice little crab. Bandit, got it. Yeah, bandit, get your face out of there, mate. They're going absolutely to Wally. We've still got quite a few shrimp left in there. What's up? Quarter what? That was that was a three hook loop rig with prawns on. Ah, this this, this row was caught on a prawn. This was caught on a prawn, yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Well, there we go. Show that they're working. Beautiful eyes in here. And yeah, we've got a few of these guys. They're coming for the next session. All right. Last haul on Simon's trap. Absolute monster prawn there. Good few crabs in it. That's a pretty successful haul. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, about, about five common shore crabs. Yeah, and just that one chunky old shrimp. And it's interesting to see just how well the old drop net did being used as essentially a crab net. Still got the same mackerel that I started with. I'll probably just lob that in the sea for the crabs and the shrimp. But yeah, he hasn't taken that, that, that much damage. Bit of damage down there, bit in the middle, bit by them fins and yeah, he's had his eyes worked on, but yeah, not bad for one fish all night. There are guys, it's half two in the morning. Can you hear them crickets? They're deafening. Yeah, it must be thousands of them up there. Yeah, anyway, it's time to call it a night. A, the fishing slacked off. B, the dogs are getting a bit grouchy. C, poor Simon's got work in the morning. Um, so yeah, it's time to call it a night. I'd say it's quite a good night though, really. Anyway guys, we've got a good, probably about a mile to trek from here. So, I'm going to have to love you and leave you. 
Hope you've had a good time watching tonight's session and found it interesting. And uh, yeah, we'll see you again next time.